The Great Stories brought to you by DigiKey and Angel Fred thanks to DigiKey every single week. Lady to use the power of engineering to help you. Yes, you find things that you want on DigiKey.com. Lady what are you looking for this week on DigiKey.com? Well, um, what I thought I would show off was actually just 10 microfarad capacitors. So if you go back to the overhead, um, you know, just showing off a project why I replaced. Well, this, you know, I've got 10 microfarad capacitors here and here. This is a little buck a boost converter to 12 volts. So I've got these two big caps here are, are 10 microfarads. And then over on this board, you know, I've got, just, you know, all of these are 10 microfarads, all these chonkers over here. Um, this was a design where I had two 100 microfarads, turns out too big, one victim back to 10. And I realized I haven't done a great search where I talk about getting just jelly bean 10 microfarad caps. And we use a lot of 10 microfarad caps. Obviously you pair them nicely, like a, like a like a Cabernet with some lasagna. You get your 10 microfarad, your one microfarad, and then a 0.1 microfarad. You put them together, you've got a full decade, you know, coverage for high frequency and like bulk capacitance. And we, use, you know, we sometimes we use electrolytics um, and there's times to use electrolytics. So for example, when you need high voltage, a lot of bulk capacitance, this is 47, 25 volt. Um, for the pricing, you just go to electrolytic, but there's still a lot of 10 microfarads. Um, why 10 microfarad electrolytic, uh, ceramics? Um, ceramic cap capacitors are inexpensive, easy to pick in place. They're small. Um, they're very low ESR, which means that they'll, uh, perform fairly well at, um, reducing high frequency noise, but mostly they're just like really easy to pick in place and small. I mean, like tantalum, um, it's like a rare earth metal that a lot of people, you know, it, it's complicated to make sure that you're getting it like ethically sourced and also they're much more expensive. Uh, so I don't really use tantalum kind of at all. I don't think I've like used it at all. Um, I basically just use electrolytics when I need 47 and above and um, for anything below I use ceramics. And there's only one time I'll say that you should not use ceramics and there are some power supply chips that need um, high ESR for stability because they use that it, the series resistance of the capacitor to stabilize the feedback. I think the MIC 5205 or, or like there's a, I don't remember exactly the part number, but I remember seeing once, uh, you know, I tried making a power supply with a, um, like an old older chip. It was like an old 1117 or something. And I tried um, building on a PCB with ceramics. It actually wasn't stable. I saw like it was kind of oscillating. When I put on um, the same capacitance, but electrolytic, it stabilized. So, you know, it happens. Um, okay, so let's go to the computer. Oh, look, there's like some beta food stuff in this photo. That's kind of cool. Um, okay, so your standard uh, 10 microfarad ceramic capacitor is lovely. And there's lots. Um, don't forget, there's dark mode. But I think it's easier to read the video in light mode. So I'm going to just continue in light mode. So first off, we want only active, 10 microfarad, of course. And then uh, let's just do, you know, in stock and exclude marketplace just to look at what's in stock right now at DigiKey um, and sold from DigiKey so we get it like instantly. Okay, so now we can actually start, you know, there's still a thousand options just for the 10 microfarad caps. So the next thing I like to look at is tolerance. Um, and the tolerance is actually related to the, um, actually, sorry, let's do surface mount. Also, let's avoid, through, although there's many through hole ceramic capacitors. Okay, um, so when you look at the tolerances, much like resistors, capacitors have tolerance, and the tolerance is going to be related to the temperature coefficient, which is also used as it's like the dielectric. And sometimes you'll see this X5R, X7R, Y5V. So Y5V is going to be like the cheapest one, and that's the one that's plus minus 20%. But like these days, you don't have to go with like it's, I don't really use the Wi-Fi V anymore because you get much better performance from like X5R, X7R. Um, X7R and X5R, I think are slightly different temperature. Like one is industrial and one's commercial. So I look for like 10, 
is kind of what I go with. A reasonable price and also like doesn't, it's not like too um, wobbly when it comes to uh, the consistency. Next up, your voltage rating. So in general, you would you want to use the lowest voltage rating for your situation. So if you're you know it's a five volt power supply, use six point three volt. Nine volt power, eight volt power supply, ten volt, twelve volt, sixteen. Right, you always go a couple volts up, and then that's your voltage rating. However, I don't want to stock like five different voltages for um different use cases because a lot of my stuff is three volt or five volt so should i get 6.3 well you just saw that little boost converter goes up to 12 volts i don't want to have to pick like oh that one cap is a 16 and that one's a... so i pretty much always pick 16 to 25. i feel like that really covers a lot honestly i tend to use 16 but like depending on your use cases maybe you need that extra boost for for 25 go for it okay and that actually cuts it down a lot so it's like now 350 options so next is the package case so you know without going into like you know a, a 30 minute discussion there's a lot of videos about it the bigger the package the more so the bigger the package and the coefficient depending on the coefficient you're going to have less dc bias loss of your bulk capacitance what do i mean so Electrolytic capacitors are actually kind of nice in that when you put 16 volts across them, 47 microfarad, you're gonna actually get 47 microfarad of capacitance. That's not true of ceramics. The DC voltage across them actually greatly reduces, like easily 50% or more, the capacitance rating. So you buy a 10 microfarad capacitor, you put six volts across it or five volts across it, now it's a 4.7 which is fine, you just add, you know, that's why I put lots of them on there. They're only like a penny or two a piece, but it's something to think about, especially if you're like, I mean, I wouldn't design these into filters. I think if you're doing filters, you're gonna use smaller capacitors and you'll use COG, C0G, which is um, a uh, dielectric that doesn't lose the bulk capacitance. But let's just look at the data sheet here. Actually, I don't know if it's in the data sheet. It might be in the spec sheet. Yeah, okay. Voltage derating. So there's temperature derating as they get hotter, they also lose up to 60%. So watch for that. But the one that is voltage. Hold on. It might not be in this. Um, Derating. Okay, this is only temperature derating. Applied voltage. It doesn't have the graph. Okay, hold on one second. If you go to the uh, product page, because I saw this earlier. Characteristics. Uh, so this has fairly good temperature characteristics. So that's good. But the DC bias characteristics, you can see here. As we go from zero to like five, you've lost 50% and you go higher you lose even more and that is a 0805 if you go to um hold on got mixed up if you go to like a 1206 or whatever so let's look at this uh 1206 capacitor and look at this specifications Hopefully it's in this document. I probably should have I pulled these, I probably should have pulled these up. Ah, here you go. Um day rating DC bias. Okay. Um no, sorry, this is still the X5R. This is not that specific one. One moment. I click on the spec. Hold on. Let me find one that has. I may not be able to find it, but basically the larger it is, maybe maybe TDK has. Characteristic. 
Okay, so for this one, the 1206 instead of the 0805, you'll notice at the five volt, you lose 15%, or if you remember on the 0805, we lost 50%. So the bigger the, the the physically larger the capacitor in general, check the spec sheet. Like and you see, sometimes you have to like look around. It's going to derate, but the derating will vary, and the derating also varies by the dielectric um, and the um, so it's like Y five X five R uh, X seven R C zero G small. Obviously, for like if you're getting your like twenty two picofarad capacitors, those are not going to be uh, derating as much because you're going to get ones that are that have a high quality dielectric. Um, but when you're talking about the bulk capacitance, it does matter. So you just put like twice as many on. I don't know. They're like a penny or two a piece. Um, so let's go back. I will. I tend to use 0805, to be honest. Um, so let's look at 0805. And it's about 100 options. And there's a couple of different ones. Again, different uh, voltages. What you're going to be paying for. I mean, you're like, what's the difference? All these wires are 100. Um, slightly different heights and sizes. Uh, some are different temperature gratings. And some are just different tape and reel sizes. So like, the, you know, there's the, um, this one, like, I think is, you know, I don't know, the G, maybe it's like the reel is bigger. When you get it, there's like a 3,000, yeah, this is like a 2,000 tape reel, 3,000, 4,000, 10,000. That's another thing. If you're getting these caps by the reel, um, because you're in a pick and place. The 10K piece reels are awesome because you load them once you forget them, but your feeder has to support that size reel. Something which I learned once when I actually was like, oh, I'll just buy the 10,000. And then we got this like 13 inch reel and I realized it wouldn't um, go on the pick and place machine. But if you're just buying these generically, this one is super cool. The CL21A106 uh, CoQ, CoQ NNE. I don't know, 10 microfarad Samsung generic cap. I use these by like the bazillion. We literally sell like a million a year uh, through all of our components uh, that go to our products. So that's my pick for the great search. That's a great search.